accepted Cain's offering and turned his favor towards Abel, uh, who acknowledged the significance of uh, the blood sacrifice. Scripture says, without the shedding of blood, uh, there's no remission of sin. Uh, Oh, listen, it's not by the works that I've done. Look what I've done. Look what I present. Look what I have given. Look what I have brought. Uh, And when it's I, 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 uh, do you know what the middle word and middle letter in the word sin is? I. Selfishness will prevent us from getting to our spiritual promised land. And that is something we've found in all five of these enemies. All five of these enemies has had a level of focusing on me. I get it. We're the ones that we're with 24-7. I get it. Others don't feel our pain. Others don't feel our struggle. Others don't know uh, what you're going through. We tell people, if you only knew, and if you give them a few minutes, they'll tell you, right? Everything that, that I've had to, do you know what I had to do to get here? I love that message Friday night at Brother Crawley preached that people do it. And they're not concerned if somebody else knows about it because it's being recorded. It's being recorded. Not, not saying this, this message and this enemy that I'm talking about this morning is not saying that, that God is not aware, but it's talking about motive, the motivation. To what he's saying here is that Sidonian, the work of your own hands, says, I don't need God. I can do it. Oh, I, I proclaim. I proclaim to have a relationship with God, but I'm doing all the work in this thing. I'm, I'm the one that's keeping it going. How do you think your spouse would feel, say, hey, this marriage is only afloat because of me? Just my investment in it. I, I'm the only one. I don't think that's going to go over too well, right? In any relationship, and, and we've all probably had those friendships that we think that uh, we're the only one that's holding up that end of it. Uh, that's not our relationship with God. Uh, if anybody's holding this thing up, uh, he's holding it up. Uh, and so we see here how to deal with what seems to be uh, a contradiction. Uh, in scriptures, we find that uh, Paul writes something about works and faith, and James writes something about works and faith. And if we're not careful, uh, we'll think, man, there's a contradiction here, but we have to remember something uh, that these men wrote it but there's only one author that's the holy ghost the holy ghost moved upon each one of these men Uh, he didn't say hey paul you write this because later i'm gonna have james write this and it's gonna stir something up no the holy ghost does not bring division in his word so we see here when we look at it we're thinking uh, when, when you look at any verses of scripture you say well there's a contradiction here there's not study it deeper If you ever think that the Word of God is contradicting itself in any way, dig deeper. Fast a meal, fast a day, fast a week, fast a month if you have to, uh, but find out what the Word is truly saying because I can guarantee you uh, there is not a contradiction. So let's just look. Romans 4, 2 through 5, and then James 2, 22, 26. I'm going to read both passages because when I just say Romans 4, 2 through 5, I don't know what that says. James 2, 20 through 26, I don't know what that says, so we need to read them real quick. Is that all right? All right, Brother Paul said I could. Romans 4, 2 through 5 says, For if Abraham for if Abraham were justified by works, he hath wherefore, whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the Scripture? That's what's important. What saith the Scripture? <coughs> Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But of him that worketh not, but believe on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Now that's what Paul said in Romans chapter 4. Here's what James writes about works and faith in James 2, 20 through 26. I love both of these passages, by the way. But will thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works? And by works was faith made perfect? He's asking a bunch of questions. The scriptures was fulfilled which saith, (coughs) excuse me, Abraham believed God and was reputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. You see then how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. 
Likewise, also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way? For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. When you begin to look at that, you begin to say, man, are these guys in a debate? But both are talking about the same thing, but each one is talking about it in a different way. Each one of them understands and recognizes uh, uh, what the Scripture says. Each one of them were moved uh, by the Holy Ghost. Here's the difference. Paul speaks of justification before God. What does justification mean? The easiest way for me to remember the definition of justification is this. Justified, never done it. Justification. James speaks about justification before men. Well, what does that mean, Pastor? Uh, God sees our heart. God knows our faith. But can I ask you something this morning? If I just stood here in front of this church, can you see my heart? Can you see my faith? How do you know my heart? But when you see me under a bridge feeding the homeless... When you see me working youth camps, when you see me preaching uh, under a passion and an anointing, uh, I guarantee you, Brother Crawley walked in this room uh, for the first service. If you never saw him before, uh, you didn't see his heart, you didn't see his faith, uh, but there was no not denying when he stepped on this platform uh, and opened the Word of God, uh, his heart, uh, his passion, uh, his love. Uh, oh, listen, God already knows that, uh, and so many people want to lean on that well God knows my heart uh, and it's not by works anyway uh, so I'm not going to do anything Uh, that's what Paul is talking about uh, but James here is writing uh, about that there that they're seeing that uh, Paul is writing about something inward and James writing something about outward Uh, Paul is talking about this the roots uh, of our justification Uh, Paul said I'm rooted uh, in my faith I'm rooted uh, in the law Uh, I'm rooted uh, in the word of God Uh, I am what I am because of the Word. Why do you live the way that you live? Well, I'm an alcoholic because my dad was an alcoholic and his dad was an alcoholic. Everybody justifies their actions. Why are you who you are today? I'm born again by the blood of the Lamb. I'm rooted in the Word of God. I've got roots. Psalms chapter 1 tells us that man of faith is like a tree that's planted by the waters, uh, and those roots go deep. Uh, he said, but the ungodly are not so. Uh, they're blown away with every wind of time. Listen, if we're living by works, uh, when our ability to work run out, so do we. Uh, but when we're rooted in God's word, uh, we stand fast. I saw something from a, a retired minister. And this is something that reminds us we have to be careful the things that we say and the things that we post. Somebody put a simple, and I agree with it, and he said he agreed with it. Said that, let me make sure I get it right. Church online is like a fake, like a fireplace on your TV screen. You can see it, but you can't feel the warmth. I said amen. I agree to that 100%. And then friend of mine, old friend of mine, my dad followed him at two different churches, I believe, pastor. He's a retired minister. And he said, I 1,000% agree with that. He said, but thank God for online church. He said, because now I'm retired and I've been having a lot of medical issues. He said, I can't get to church. I, I, I want to be there. I would be there, but I can't turn on that's that, that broadcast, and I can listen to my pastor preach. He said, you're right, it's not the same, but it's better than not having anything. See, see, if he was living by the works, if he was living by his ability to get up and get to his car and get to church uh, and, and his church attendance uh, and his faithfulness to the house of God, all of that is important, uh, but that's all that you have. Uh, they, uh, that's, I'm saved because, uh, see, 2020 proved that uh, when their works were shut down, when they said you can't go to church, uh, 33% of the church disappeared uh, after that. Why? Uh, because it was all about, look, I'm here. Uh, hey, I'm here. Uh, I, I'm working. They needed that work. 
work and they needed that uh, instead of finding a new way. Uh, oh, but thank God for the men and women of God who got innovative. Uh, those men and women of God who said, uh, we're not shutting down the church. Uh, we're going to get out on the front porch uh, and have drive-by services. Uh, we're going to have, uh, we're going to stand up. I've saw videos uh, of pastors standing uh, on the back of their truck preaching. Uh, why? Because they knew uh, that it was not about the works that took place in the building. Uh, this is not the church. This is the church building. Uh, we are the church. We are the body of Christ. Uh, and Sister Gilda said, we are the representatives. Uh, and so uh, Paul is knowing this, but James, uh, he's talking about something different. Uh, the same but different. You ever heard that? Same but different. We're talking about the same subject but a different aspect of the subject. Paul is making sure that we're rooted. But James is talking about the fruit of our justification. If you have, if you go and you plant a tree and the roots don't grow deep, no fruit coming up on it. You're going to stand there and you're going to look at that tree and you're going to say, what's going on? You get rooted. Same way with us in our Christian life. If we don't get rooted, if we're not rooted, we're not going to see any fruit. But the evidence, what is the fruit of the Spirit? The evidence of that seed of God that's been planted in our lives. The evidence that we are rooted. See, we can tell people that we're rooted. A young man told me one time, he said, I can do a backflip. I said, prove it. Prove it. If he says, I could say, I, I love what Brother Paul said. Paul says, I could say I'm the Easter Bunny, but that don't make me him. Right? We can say we're anything. But so what James is talking about, when you begin to talk about your faith, there's a world out there that says, I need to see that. When they're broken and when they need a healing, uh, you say that your word says that you can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Uh, I want to see that. I want to see. So James is talking about uh, the fruits of our justification. Uh, so two very different things. And, and you see, when you first look at these, you think, well, Scripture has contradicted itself, uh, so I'm not going to believe the Bible anymore. Oh, but when you take time to look and realize that Paul is talking about our roots in the Word uh, and James is talking about the fruit that we have uh, because of the root that I have in God's Word. Uh, oh, listen, if we're not rooted, we're going to blow away uh, with every wind of doctrine that blows. Uh, but when we got our foot on the rock uh, and our minds made up and our roots go deep, uh, when we're deep in God's Word, uh, how do we get deep in God's Word? Well, it takes some work. Pastor, you just said that works of our own hand. No, the work of His Spirit that begins to work in us. There's no other book that you can pick up that reads you as you're reading it. Moby Dick don't read you as you read it. Huck Finn, Tom Sawyer. See, one of my, my favorite authors here lately has been Andy Andrews. Write some good, good books. And so there's been times that I thought that he was reading me some of the things that he wrote because it applies across the board. Ed, Edwin Cole was a great Christian writer for men, and I love reading his material. And why, how does it speak? You know how Edwin Cole was able to speak to me? He's dead. Now he's gone uh, because his books. Uh, but you know what is found within his book? Scripture. Scripture, those verses. But when you pick this up and you begin to read it, Scripture tells us that he, that he knows the very thoughts and intents of our heart. This word. He knew me before I was ever known. He knew you before you were ever known. He says it in here, before you were ever conceived in your mother's womb, I knew you. He's orchestrated and ordained. So this word, when we're rooted in this word, but when our roots go deep in the Word of God, it's just simple. There's going to be works. It's just simple. There's going to be fruit. I can step on your toe, and I guarantee you there's going to be a reaction. Right? My dad says it like this. He said, I got a pop-off valve because I can only handle so much of the glory of God. So if you hear me give out a hoop and a holler, it's my pop-off valve. I can't contain it inside any longer. When there is something that we agree with in a message, we'll go, amen. If there's something we don't agree with, we're real quiet. Oh, me. 
But I found that people that they know it's hitting them, they'll say amen is a cover-up. And that, that is the enemy that we have to overcome. I want people to think that I'm holy, so I'm going to do some works. I'm going to say amen louder than everybody else. I'm going to worship louder than everybody else. I had a lady one time, she thought it was her calling in her place to give out a message in tongues every service. Didn't wait for anybody else to interpret it. She would interpret it. Same interpretation. Why? I'll tell you, I, I know by the Spirit of God, it is a cover-up. As long as I'm working, nobody will know the real me. Nobody will know what I'm really doing. But Paul is talking about roots. James is talking about fruit. Stand with me this morning. I'll close. The spirit of Jeff Crowley has come all over me. Both Paul and James understood very clearly that we're saved by faith in God alone. They understood that. The fact is, the faith that saves us is never really alone, though. Right? What do you mean, Pastor? I mean, a saved man will work for the kingdom, but never bases his salvation upon that work. We're not saved because we don't drink, cuss, carouse. I've known people that didn't do any of those things. They weren't saved. They weren't saved. They were good men. They, oh, they were good men. Years ago, I worked for, for this family. My dad worked for them for years. When my baby sister died, they paid for the funeral. Good people. My dad worked there for a long, long time. When I turned 18, 19 years old, I went to work for them. And my dad, for a long time, when he was younger, he would go to their house on Saturday, they lived on the St. John's River, do different things around the house. Man, they paid him good for that. And as I began to work there, my dad had other things going on and, and couldn't do that anymore, so I began to do it. And they gave me extra money to do that. So many times I would be there working. At lunchtime came, the wife would come out on the porch and say, it's time to eat. I mean, best sandwich you'd ever have. Paid us every week with cash. We didn't have, they didn't want us to have to worry about going to the bank on Friday and getting in that crowd, so they give us an envelope. They had our pay for that week, all the taxes and everything taken out. Just good people, good people. That boss, remember getting the report. Good man, as far as I know, he didn't drink, he didn't cut, I don't know those things. I don't, I never, just, just a good man. But he took one, one morning, I think it was a Saturday morning, lived on the St. John's River, beautiful home. Doctor goes out. He walked out on the end of that dock with pistol in hand and took his own life. All the money, all the good deeds, all the goodness that he had gave to his employees, all the work, it didn't fill that void within his life. There was one void, one that could fill that void, and that's Jesus. That's Jesus. And when he comes into you, when the love of God is shed abroad in your heart, we used to sing this when I was a kid, give me that old-time religion. It's good enough for me because it makes you love everybody. Yeah, you ever seen that? I've watched people in revivals that I preach and in places, uh, altar services, they get up, man, they just start hugging everybody. And, you know, the old saying was sisters hug to sisters, brothers hug to brothers. I've seen people get up there, oh, they didn't care if a brother says they hugged everybody in the room. They hug everybody. They, they probably went through Walmart that afternoon and hugged everybody in there. Why? Because the love of God has been shown abroad in their heart. It produces works, but works does not produce salvation. That's an enemy that we have to overcome if we're going to enter into our promised land. Father, I've laid, delivered what you've laid upon my heart for this service today. I pray that it found good ground because I want each one to be rooted in your word that we can spring forth with the fruit, the fruit of the gift of God that is within us. I don't need them to see what I've done, but I need them to know what you've done. And I just ask you to help us as we gather around these altars today to draw closer to you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you're here today, it doesn't matter how good you are, I just got a question for you. Do you know the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior? If you don't, I invite you today to come. I invite you to come. 
Step into this altar and ask him to come into your heart to save you, and he'll do it. He'll do it. If you've been saved, get rooted, because surely there's a work for us to do. But it has to come from the motivation of the Spirit, not a motivation of us thinking that we can work our way through this thing. Let's come, everybody. There's, there's, there's a space here, an opportunity for each one of us to pray. There's a, a time. This is, this is one of those messages. Don't leave any of us out. That we all need to pray on this, pray about this, consider this, because we're talking about entering into our promised land. I want to be rooted in His Word that I can be fruitful all that I do.